Hello, in this video we're going to go over Greylog installation on CentOS 7. This video has been edited for time to cut off certain long sequences, so please keep that in mind. The first thing we're going to go ahead and do is just look at the version to make sure we're on a current version, and then we're going to go ahead and install the OpenJDK package. Do this through yum. It is the version 1.8. I'm going to get that downloaded and installed. And then after that, there are two other packages we're going to install. One of those is going to be the EPEL release package, which will give us access to install the pwgen command. And the pwgen command is used later on during the installation. All right, after the pwgen has been installed, we're gonna go ahead and edit the yum repos and create one for MongoDB. So here I'm gonna go ahead and create the MongoDB 4.0 repo. I'm gonna paste in the code and all of this, these commands are in our docs section on docs, in the Greylog docs. Once that's been in there and put in there, we're gonna save that file off and then we're gonna go ahead and do the yum install of MongoDB. Go ahead and accept those to install the package. And then go ahead and click yes there. Now go ahead and install that. All right, once those are installed, we're gonna go ahead and check the config to make sure that MongoDB is built in as a system service. Um, run that through system control. We're gonna do a, a daemon reload first, and then we're gonna go ahead and enable that MongoD service to make sure that it starts up upon next boot. And then we're gonna go ahead and start it up now. Once that, we're going to do a PS just to understand if the service is running. And there you can see it's running, so we're good to go on the MongoDB. Now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and install the, our, um, the Elasticsearch. And first we're going to go ahead and import uh, the Elasticsearch um, repo. And then we're going to go ahead and create that file inside of our repos.d directory. Go ahead and cut and paste this from our docs. And then once that's done, go ahead and save that file. And then we're on the yum install Elasticsearch. And we are doing the Elasticsearch OSS version for the licensing. Um, 
OSS works just fine. I'm going to go ahead and install that. Now once that's done, we're going to go ahead and edit the Etsy Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch.yaml file. And we have two parameters we have to change. The first one's going to be the cluster name. This one we're going to change from my application to Graylog. And then the last thing we have to add is at the very bottom, we're going to go ahead and add in um, action.auto underscore create underscore index colon false. We're going to let Graylog manage that for us. Now once that's done, go ahead and do the check config to add the Elasticsearch service. Going to go ahead and do the system control daemon reload to make sure that system control can see this new service, as well as enabling it so it starts upon the first boot. And then lastly here, we're going to go ahead and start that service up. PS to see if Elasticsearch is running. In this case here, you can see that it is running. So we're going to go ahead and go on to our third component, which is going to be Graylog. So here I am downloading the RPM to get the latest repositories and the packages. I'll download that RPM. And then we're going to go ahead and do the yum install Graylog server. And this will download the most current version from the repository that's out there. Click yes here. It's going to download that package. Skip forward ahead a little bit for time's sake. And once that package is installed, we're going to go ahead and edit uh, the Graylog server config file. It is under Etsy Graylog server and then server.conf file. Inside here, there's a couple parameters we need to change. Um, the first one that's going to be down there is going to be uh, the password secret. This one just needs to be a salt of the password generation process. So I'm going to hop out to a shell command here. Go ahead and run our pwgen with 96 characters. To go ahead and just generate a random string of characters there. Copy that data. And then exit back into my text file and paste that one there. And then the next side down there is the root password SHA2 field we have to modify. This one's going to be the password that we're going to log on to the interface with, the web interface. The default user is admin, and then this will be whatever password you type in. Um, so I'm going to hop back out to a shell and cut and paste this command from our guide in. I'm going to go ahead and make the password here just admin, something simple. I'm going to take that hash value and then put it back into that uh, text file there. Now the last thing I'm going to do here is actually change my time zone. I'm going to copy the UTC, but as I live... In the mountain time zone, I'm going to go ahead and create that as America slash Denver. And this is important for the web interface, so you understand where the logs and what the time zone is based upon, so you know where that's at. Um, some people prefer to keep it in UTC. It depends on how you're going to be logging. After that, we're going to go ahead and add the Graylog service to the check config. Let's make sure that's there. 
and then go through the normal sys control process. We're going to do the daemon reload. And go ahead and enable the gray log server service. And the last thing we're going to do is actually start up gray log. Go. Now the process is there. Starting up, um, the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to tail the file, the, the log file for Greylog, just to see when that server is fully up and running. Uh, you'll look for a key line down here at the bottom that says Greylog server is up and running, which I highlighted there. Once that's up and running, you know Greylog started up successfully. The next thing I want to do is actually start putting in some logs into the system. So I'm going to go ahead and come into the Etsy rsyslog.com file. And inside of here, I want to point the local syslogs of the box into Greylog itself, just to make sure everything's up and working as expected. So I'm going to go ahead and add the configuration file saying star.star .star, so any log message can come in. And I'm going to say at the host. And it's going to be the local IP of the box itself. In this case, it's 211.166. And then I put on port 1514. And I picked a high port here just so the gray log process doesn't have to run its root for security reasons. And then I set our syslog and protocol 23. It gives a pre populated format that gray log understands. And I can parse off all the relevant fields automatically. So let me go ahead and restart the our syslog process now. And then I'm going to go ahead and also add inside of IP tables a few NAT statement um, redirection rules. So what these redirection rules are going to do is allow anything coming in on port 514. In this case here, I'm going to say TCP destination port 514. I want to go ahead and redirect that to port 1514, which is a higher level port, which then doesn't need the Greylog process to run as root. I'm going to go ahead and change that and do it for UDP as well. So that will automatically take anything pointed there and redirect that. You can also change the, the equipment itself if you want to. It's just another option for you. And then I'm going to go ahead and save off those IP table rules into a file so that way upon next boot they're actually loaded automatically. Now the next thing inside of here that I'm going to do is just do a essentially a netstat. I'm going to listen for different ports. I'm looking for port 9000. Here you can see that it is up and running. Um, but it is only on 127.0.0.1. So I need to modify my server config file again. I'm going to come back down here and change its listening port. Right now, it can only be accessed from the local box itself. So if I come down here into the HTTP settings category and change that bind address, I'm going to change that um, to the public IP address. It's 192.168.211.166. Go ahead and save that file and then restart Greylog. Wait for that process to come back up. And once that's up, there you go. Now you can see it's bound to the, the external IP address there. I'm also going to add inside the firewall process command here to, to allow port 9000 inbound. So by default, CentOS has a firewall blocking inbound 9000. So I need to go ahead and add a rule if you want to leave the firewall running to allow inbound port 9000. Once that rule has been added, I'm going to go ahead and open up a web browser just to test my connection in. All right, so go up to your browser, type in the external address, colon 9000, so we can get inside of that. You'll see the gray log front page here. We're going to log on admin default username, and my password was admin as well, but change that to whatever you had. And now that we're into that web interface here, let's see this first time it logs in, it brings up the help manual on this home page. You'll also notice there's that red one up there. Now if I click on that red one, you'll notice it says there's no running inputs. And inputs are ways that gray logs receives those logs. So let's go ahead and create one just to make sure everything's working as expected. So I'm going to go to that system and then select inputs. 
And the first one I'm going to create is just a syslog listener, um, syslog on UDP. So from the drop down menu, I'll go towards the bottom and select syslog UDP. Do that launch new input. I'm going to make this global so it'll work across every instance that I have. Give it a name of syslog UDP, doesn't matter, anything you want. And I'm switching that port to 1514 so it can start with running as gray log. Now, once you see it's one running that I highlighted right there in green, that means that the system is actually listening on port 1514, ready to accept logs. I'm going to hop out this box, log out real quick, and log back in just to generate some local logs. Now, once I log on to the box, I'll hop back over to the web interface. I'm going to click on that search button just to see what's came in since then. And now you can see here, the top time frame there is in the last five minutes, and there are some logs there showing me locally logging on. Well, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully that helps understand how to install CentOS 7. Happy logging.